ओके वेरी गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स वेरी गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम ईच वन ऑफ यू टू माई क्लास ऑन द इंडियन पीनल कोड एटीन सिक्सटी Let's start with my brief introduction first. My name is Sandeep Khatri. These are my areas of specialization. As you can see on the screen, here is the link of my profile of an academy. So make sure you follow that to get all the updates about my special classes and my plus courses. This is the link of my Telegram channel where you can connect with me and ask your questions. At last, I have mentioned my code that is Khatri one zero. which you can use to get free access of all the special classes available on an academy app so this was about me now i request everyone please be attentive and this is going to be interactive session which means you can ask your questions your problems whatever in relation to your this subject that is ipc before starting this class students i have one important announcement that if you are facing any difficulty in any one of these nine special laws then you can refer my special law series uh, in which i have discussed all these nine special acts in detail plus i have also covered all the important mcq as well now coming to today's class we are going to discuss the offenses relating to property so what are the offenses which one can do against property so before starting this new chapter if you uh, if you do have any questions you may ask in the comments very good evening madhur and everyone those of you who have just joined any questions students uh we have recently covered uh, chapter number 16 that is of offenses affecting human body and today we are going to start with offenses against property so in this the very first one came in is the concept of theft so what is the concept of theft we are going to cover in this class after that i will start with the concept of extortion followed by robbery and dakati so these are the four offenses which i am going to discuss in today's class one by one so first before entering into the detail of each one of these offenses let's discuss what is the relationship between theft extortion robbery and dakati there is one thing which is common in all these offenses and that are that all these are the example of those offenses which are affecting property okay so uh, whether it is theft extortion robbery or dakati now coming to the concept of theft and extortion when it comes to the offense of robbery it is either theft or extortion with some additional ingredients and then what is the difference between robbery and dakati when there are five or more persons committed the offense of robbery that is dakati only now you know you usually get one this interesting question if you can answer this in comment can one person can one single person commit offense of robbery yes anyone who likes to answer this question a very simple one can a single person commit offense of robbery yes or no anyone who likes to answer this can any single person commit offense of robbery yes madhur or anyone who likes to answer this question so the answer to this question students yes even a single person can commit offense of theft extortion or robbery but when it comes to dakati you need minimum 5 or more person there is no limit for the maximum one 
Now let's discuss all these offenses in detail one by one. Uh, student, a trick which I have already shared with you that whenever in your exams there are there are uh, there there can be two kind of questions which you may face. The very first one is going to be the direct one, like what is theft, what is uh, robbery, what is dakati, what is extortion, what is the difference between robbery and dakati, and so on. So these are the direct questions, or you may get the application based questions. Application based, in short, a hypothetical situation will be given that A did this, B did this, then what offense has been committed here, whether theft has been committed here or not, whether it is the offense of robbery or not. So to answer both these kind of questions, whether it is a direct question or an application based question, if you can recall all the essentials of the concerned offense, you can easily answer that particular question. So, as far as your section 378 is concerned, if you can recall all the important essential, you can answer whether it amounts to theft or not. Coming to the very first essential of the theft is dishonesty. Intending to take dishonesty. Now, in short, if I need to conclude this first point, this is basically mensria. Without mensria, theft cannot took place. This is one of the most important essential to commit the offense of theft. Intending to take dishonesty here means intention must be there. What kind of an intention? The mensria, the guilty mind to take dishonestly. Dishonestly here means wrongful loss and wrongful gain. Whosoever has committed the offense of theft, if A has committed the offense of theft of a mobile phone of Mr. B, then A is the one who has taken some property and he, because he is the one who has committed the offense of theft, he is the one who had the position of wrongful gain. And who is at the wrongful loss against whom the offense of theft has taken place. So this is the very first essential which needs to be fulfilled. If someone by mistake done something, that cannot be the case of theft. Moving forward. Uh, very good evening, Devya and everyone, those of you who have just joined. Fauzia, very good evening, Ji. Uh, the students who have joined recently, right now I am discussing the essentials of theft. I'm just done with the very first essential that is intending to take dishonestly. Moving to the second essential of the theft. The second essential is movable property. Movable property here means the subject matter of the theft cannot be in any circumstances be your immovable property. Immovable property cannot be subject matter for theft only movable property and what is the major difference between movable and immovable property the property which you can move from one place to another will be considered as a movable property for example on my desk i can see the laptop mobile phone the books the notes the mouse uh, the stationery and everything so this all the table will be considered as a movable property coming towards the third essential out of the position This term position is important students. Mind it, this out of the position. Right now, my mobile phone, the laptop, the all the examples which I took for movable property, all are under my position. But if someone took it, which is out of my position, if someone took my laptop and uh, I took my laptop out of my house without my permission. Then you can say that is out of the position of Sandeep Katri. So that's your third essential. Moving forward, the fourth essential. Of any person. Now what do we mean by this term? Any person. It does not mean that it must be the, the person to whom you are moving the movable property out. 
that does not need to be the owner any person means any person means the person who is not even the owner of that property even the theft can be committed against that person as well fifth without consent and the last essential is moves that property if all these six essentials has been fulfilled without consent so if someone is taking my laptop with my permission with my free consent then it will not amount to theft moves that property in that direction the purpose of moving that properties so that the person in whose possession it should be that cannot see and later on that person can took that with himself so if all these six essentials has been fulfilled that will amount to the offense of the theft any questions from this part any any essential which is not clear to you minded students whenever you are getting a question in your exams whether it is a direct or application based you need to recall all these six essentials if there is any one or more than one essential is missing in your application based question then it will not amount to theft so section 378 which deals with the concept of theft these are the six essentials now moving forward to the next topic that is extortion section 383 deals with the concept of extortion now what are the essentials of extortion intentionally which means without intention extortion also cannot take place put any person in fear of any injury now the very first one is basically mens rea must be there guilty mind must be there then you put any person in fear of any injury any injury here means you must be able to recall section number 44 that talks about four kinds of injury that is whether it is illegal doing something to physical body or illegal injury to the mind or to the reputation or to the property so any kind of injury when you put someone in fear to that person or any other now to that person or any other means in that person may be interested you know one of the best example of extortion can be uh, one of your most famous bollywood dialogue that agar tumne paise nahi diye to tumhare bachcho ke tukde tukde kar kar kutto ko khila denge now that bacche can fall under the children can fall under any other category and that father can be under that person so injury fear of injury to that person or any other to whom it may be interested so usually that any person is going to be the family member or or kind of a relative moving forward to deliver any property or valuable security any property here means that may be any movable property or immovable property and what do we mean by this term valuable security whether this term valuable security has been defined or not anyone in the comments whether this term valuable security is defined under chapter 2 yes or no if yes under which section very good evening uh, anita and everyone those of you who have just joined yes students valuable security defined under section section number 
सेक्शन नंबर थर्टी डिफाइंस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वैल्यूएबल सिक्योरिटी नाउ वन मेजर डिफरेंस यू कैन फिगर इट आउट हेयर दैट वेन इट कम्स टू एक्सटॉशन दिस कैन बी ऑफ एनी प्रॉपर्टी वेदर इट इज अ मूवेबल और अमूवेबल बट इन द लास्ट कॉन्सेप्ट अंडर सेक्शन थ्री सेवेंटी एट इट वॉज ओनली मूवेबल प्रॉपर्टी यू यूजली going to get these kind of questions in your pt exam that extor the offense of extortion can be committed against movable property immovable property both of the above or similar in the cases of theft as well so these are the four essential now let let me give you one simple example if a gives a call to b that if you are not going to give me 10 lakh rupees i am going to kill you now what is this this is an example of extortion call so what offense is written here the offense of extortion any questions from the offense of theft or extortion yes please moving forward now what is robbery section 390 robbery can be committed either in one of these circumstances either it is a case of theft or it is a case of extortion which means if there is no case of theft or and not case of extortion then it can never be a case of robbery always do remember for committing the offense of robbery it must be either theft or extortion now what about theft let me give you a very simple chart to recall this concept theft plus some additional ingredients will is going to be the offense of robbery extortion plus some additional ingredients equals to the offense of robbery now all you need to remember is what is this additional ingredients let me give you one simple example if a went into this house at 2 am secretly and then open the almira to call the cash everything and comes out now suppose this is the house of mr x and the moment mr x wake up he got to know that the offense of theft has taken place this is a very simple example of theft okay now moving to the now when theft plus some additional amount of ingredients will amount to robbery let's revisit this example if mr a went into this house of mr x and mr x woke up at 2 am only and now a is looking at mr x a put out his gun and he's like if you are going to make any sound i'm going to shoot right shoot you right now and mr x silently sit in a corner while a is committing the offense of theft now when a comes out of the house of mr x a has not committed the offense of theft a has committed robbery why robbery because now it is not only theft theft plus the keyword which you need to remember is instant fear of causing death or you can say instant fear of causing hurt or wrongful restraint if be, because in my second example all these points were present and that is why it is a case of robbery so i hope now you can re, now you can remember when it is a case of just theft and when theft will amount to robbery any questions similarly if even in the even in the case of extortion instant 
fear of death hurt or wrongful restraint has been added here then it will amount the offense of robbery so this is the relationship between the offense of robbery theft and extortion if you need to ask me the difference this is the difference let's take one simple example of extortion as well so if a call mr b that i need 10 lakh rupees or i'm going to shoot you fine this is a case of extortion but if mr x said i'm not going to give you any penny in that case if mr a visit x office and put a gun on his table that either i'm going to shoot you right now or you are going to give me 10 lakh rupees so this is going to be extortion plus instant fear of death and this will amount to offense of robbery now anything if you are still not clear with theft extortion and robbery and if there are five or more persons five or more persons who are committing the offense of robbery then they will be liable under dakati this is the difference between the offense of robbery and dakati yes please section 392 deals with the punishment of robbery section 395 deals with the punishment of dakati section 384 deals with the punishment of extortion and section 3 uh, 79 deals with the punishment for theft even the punishments the provisions of punishments are equally important plus uh, there are going to be illustrations in case of section 383 or in the case of section 378 which are equally important you must go through with each of the illustration of all these concerned sections any questions students before concluding the class So this is the link of my profile of an academy my telegram channel and this is my code khatri10 let's crack pcsj with an academy uh if you are preparing for up judiciary or chatisgarh judiciary there is a three full length uh, mock test available for up judiciary and five full length mock test available for chatisgarh judiciary exam there's a new batch which is going to be started Safalta 4.0 comprehensive batch starting from Feb 16. There's a rapid revision for Uttarakhand Judiciary going on. Already started from Feb 3. An academy has already announced their judiciary notes. These are the main test series for Punjab Judiciary, where you will get three full length uh, test for mains exam plus their model answers. And that's it from my end. See you in my next class. Till then, yes, it's time to say peace.